Howdy, everybody. I pray you had a wonderful week. This is a piece of um, maple that a friend of mine, Mike Henman, brought down from Georgia. Thank you so much, Mike, for bringing me all this wood. I had a few questions um, about the Irish grind on my 5 8 ball gouge. The Irish grind is also known as an Ellsworth grind. I think they both have the same degree. Um, and there are some um, websites you can find that will suggest that it's also a sweat back or fingernail grind, which I think the sweat back and fingernail grind are only done at like a 50 degree, and the Irish grind in Ellsworth is a 55. Um, just take a look online. There are several different, um, I guess, sources that you can find the different angles and the different grinds, and, and there are specific names. I, some people will argue that a Irish grind is different than an Ellsworth, so I apologize if I'm telling you something different than what you've looked up. Um, it's confusing to me just as much as it's probably confusing to some of y'all. So I'm going to try to put um, images, update all of my cards that have the images of the grinds. Um, I know I've been putting the angles on there, but unless you see the tool really up close it's hard to tell or actually I would say until you use it with that grind it's really hard to tell um, the usefulness of it but my opinion the Irish grind is the most versatile I'm able to hog out a ton of material do sheer cuts and real fine cuts and because the nose is pointed and the wings are swept back it enables me to do um, detailed work as well. I do not do a relief cut on the heel. The heel is the back part where the bottom of the gouge bar starts to go into the angle. And I do not um, put a relief cut because it's just not necessary. I haven't found it necessary. Um, the 55 degree seems to uh, work just fine. And if I need to switch to a smaller gouge if I'm getting into tighter spaces that's what I do and that's what I'm using here is my um, smaller my smaller gouge that came in the hurricane kit um, with three gouges so if you go to the description below I have a link for those three gouges that I use um, and you have to uh, sharpen them yourself with the Irish grind you have to grind them to that 55 degree so this bowl I had in mind I wanted to kind of make this neat little rim on it and you'll see shortly that I just wasn't feeling it it didn't it didn't look right to me and the wood had a lot of cracks because the pith is um, towards the very top and center it had a lot of cracks in those kind of I guess wings that I was creating there and I just didn't like how unstable I guess it looked um, it just didn't flow so I decided to go ahead and, and take it off and um, just do a more um, simpler shape. And sometimes it happens. You get into it and then just be like, uh, you know. I'd rather work with it and try to see what I can do while there's wood there. But once you take it off, it's kind of nothing you can do from that point. It's gone. You'll notice, too, that after putting the um, Starbond glue and then accelerator I rub the shavings in there it's because I want to try to fill the cracks not just with glue but um, wood because they're little larger cracks and some of it is like um, having some tear out around the cracked areas so I just wanted to um, use the shavings to kind of fill um, that in plus it helps to absorb the glue because even sometimes when you spray the accelerator, it will harden the top layer of the glue, but whatever soaked into the wood ends up not hardening right away, and you'll turn on the lathe, and then you'll get, you know, glue slung on you. Of course, I always do wear my mask even whenever I'm sanding, um, because I just feel that the bowl, there's a possibility the bowl could fly off, um, you know, at any time. So I try to wear my face shield, I should say, um, I wear it 90% of the time during the turning. Sometimes I'll take it off when I'm doing finishes or whatnot because at that point I'm not having any tools on the wood that could cause a catch or bump into it and then um, 
you know, obviously it come off and hurt me, but just turn safely. Of course, anything can happen unexpectedly, um, even with the most skilled and experienced turner. Uh, things do happen, and sometimes we have no control of those, but best we can do is prepare ourselves for um, as much as we possibly can. Also, I had questions about my um, abrasive paste recipe. I was fooling around with a recipe that I had made for a video, um, and I do have a video. If you look through my playlist, there's a video of the DIY abrasive paste. I have played around with it since to try to get um, more abrasion and uh, it to be a little looser. So I will put out a video once I accomplish a mix that I like, but just um, understand that, that abrasive paste and the consistency of, consistency of it is going to be something almost to a personal taste. So don't be afraid to mess around with the ratios of abrasi uh, abrasive powder, whatever you decide to use, um, to the mineral oil and uh, beeswax mixture. Because I've been doing the same thing, just trying to get that uh, perfect feel. Um, I tend to put mine a little more on the beeswax side and, and it get, it's sticky. So anyways, I just figured I'd mention that. Same with the uh, wood polish. I'm still playing around with mixtures of that and products too because um, there are several, several different ways you can make it out there. So once I um, get something formulated to what I like, I'll share that with you. Um, and at least you'll have some sort of starting point, but um, until then I'm, I'm still playing around with something I like. So this is also another piece of maple um, that I decided to use for the lid. I decided to use it because one, the size was um, just about right for what I needed. Another had cracks and stuff in it, so I knew I was going to have to turn away a lot of material uh, for the lid. So I didn't mind um, this using this piece because most of those cracks would be turned away. Um, once I got into it, though, I realized, oh gosh, there's a lot more cracks in it than I thought. and. I wasn't sure. It also had some punkiness to it. Um, I wasn't really sure if I I wanted to use it. So I actually just made a, a tenon on, on it for the inside of the lid and set it aside for a couple of weeks and picked it back up a few weeks later and decided to try to just make it work. So here I have it turned around um, with the tenon that I had previously put on it. This was a few weeks later. I soaked it down really good with some resin. I was stabilizing some magnolia seed pods. So I went ahead and used the leftover uh, resin and put it on the outside of this while it was sitting on my bench uh, waiting to be finished. It didn't soak in completely because I didn't soak it in the resin with acetone, but I just painted it on the surface just to kind of help, um, hopefully that it would soak into at least some of those cracks. Um, there was a lot of cracks in it and it just, it just looked, I don't know, it just wasn't attractive to me. Being this was going to be at the very top of the piece, um, it was the lid and it, it was, you know, I don't know. I just decided to go ahead and put the um, metallic wax on it and, and that was one of the 
the reasons why I put the metallic wax on it because I felt that it just would look better. It would do something more for the piece uh, than what the natural wood had because of so much CA glue I had to use and um, starting to get uh, get into the punky areas of the wood. So, and there was a lot of uh, chip outs and, and cracks that were causing the top piece that I was trying to form. Um, I had to get smaller and smaller and smaller because the wood was just chipping off from, from the cracks. So luckily I got uh, past uh, most of those cracks during this stage. And I apologize, my ears that I have glued onto my face shield, they kind of get in the way of the camera when the camera's sitting above me like that. So I apologize for blocking the view. I decided because there were so many um, spots of CA glue that I would just lather the piece in CA glue. So that way, when I did put the metallic wax on or what other finish I decided to do, it would all at least take evenly. In other words, the whole piece was, was covered instead of just um, some of it. And because I wasn't sure how the metallic wax would uh, sit over top of that CA glue, even after you sand it and all that, I just, um, I wasn't sure, so I just figured, well, if it's not going to go on, at least it won't go on the whole piece instead of it going on unevenly, which it ended up kind of doing. You'll see, and I'll explain a little more once we get to that part. I used a rubber glove just to keep wax and um, the finish that I'm going to put on the handle piece, the finial piece. I wanted to keep any extra product off of where I was going to put the colored wax because like I said before I don't want it to um, adhere to it unevenly so I was just doing my best to protect it and still had to apply tape around it um, around that finial and, and mush it down really good but it worked served its purpose so so I'm just putting the DIY abrasive paste and then I put my homemade polish and then OB Shine Juice, uh, just like the rest of the, the finish on the bottom half. Now I'm just using denatured alcohol to clean off any oils, like from my fingers or whatever that could have gone on the lid that will prevent the wax from sticking. And now I'm just wrapping the finial so that way it doesn't get stuff on it that I don't want on it. I had um, two colors, the bronze and the gold, and I was undecided which one to use. Um, I think both of them would have looked very good, but I ended up going with the gold because um, I hadn't used it yet. So thank you, Eric, for helping me out with that. I had to... Uh, reach out to some people and, and help them help me decide because I liked them both and it's hard to decide. So anyways, um, as you can see, I'm patting a little thicker on some spots and just patting it in because it's not wanting to stick. And I'm not sure if that was because there was more CA glue there or if it was just the grain of the wood. Um, so I just patted it in and allowed it to set a little bit, dry um, hard before wiping it or, or maneuvering it anymore. And that seemed to work. And this gold seemed a little more liquidy than my copper. So it, it cause it's designed to where you can do a sheer coat with it. So the kind of wood grain kind of shows through, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to be um, solid. So that's why I keep adding and adding and adding because in some areas it just looks sheer. I did have a commenter ask me, um, they wanted to do more of a sheer coat on a piece they had with this wax and I suggested because it was a water base just to mix water with it and see if that gave you more of a sheer and he said he mixed his um, denatured alcohol with it I think it was and it worked perfectly as a sheer so you could still see the wood through it so thank you for that for letting me know that that's what you used
put four coats total of the uh, lacquer gloss on it and I use a mini hair dryer on the cool setting and I can get four or five coats on within 20 minutes so that's what I love about that little dryer so here it is all finished um, the lid and everything and even though it took me several months or a month or so to get this completed sometimes some projects just need a little extra time and it'll all turn out in due time right anyways I hope you all had a I hope you have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for watching thank you for your kind words in the comments and my daughter said thank you for wishing her happy birthday last week so we appreciate all of you take care and God bless